This morning on BRN, how to retire. Joining me now to discuss this, Christine Benz of Morningstar. And by the way, she is the author of the new book, How to Retire. Christine, so great to see you. Thanks for joining us in the program this morning. Oh my gosh, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, well, well, I can speak personally for myself. Big fan, uh, follow your work. And uh, obviously you, you come out with a new book that we, we talked about in the uh, title of the show. And my first question is, how do you retire? Well, good question. I haven't done it yet. In fact, some people have come up to me and said, how's retirement? And I'm like, um, I'm not retired. So I'm still working. But um, I do think from the process of uh, after the process of working on this book that ideally you would begin with some introspection well before retirement starts. I My sense is that many people do come into retirement with the financial piece buttoned down and they have spent most of their energies um, and it could be the circles I move in that that people I I tend to hear from are very attuned to the finance slash investment piece of things. But they spend time with the spreadsheets and the calculators and um, you know, going on social security and figuring out how much they should they can get out. And they should do all of that stuff but they should also do a lot of other stuff, thinking about um, how they'll spend their time in retirement and not just the leisure activities, which of course you have pent up demand for those things, but also you know, what are the things that will give you purpose and a sense of identity when you step away from work? How will you um, maintain relationships if a lot of your relationships came from your workplace? And for some people, they have very diversified friends networks, but some people, especially men, the data suggests, might tend to have a lot of their social interactions coming through work. How will you replace those interactions? So I like the idea of people being thoughtful about uh, their vision for their retirement, and that should come well before your retirement date. It's it's almost Christine like a dress rehearsal. So if you're if you're going to do a play, yeah, before you do the official Broadway production, you kind of do an uh, a dress rehearsal. Is that is that kind of what is probably the best process? So get an idea of of what retirement could look like for you, and then kind of play it out so that when you get to retirement, you kind of have a real good feel and you're not caught off guard. It definitely. So I love the idea of doing a little bit of um, experimentation. So using, if you have breaks from work uh, where you might normally travel, spend a little little bit of time, maybe a week, maybe two if you can spare it, uh, where you are just in, your, in the home you plan to live in when you're retired, figure out what your days feel like. Maybe it's exercise, maybe it's projects, maybe it's some golf or fun relaxation, but but dabble a little bit. And, and that this holds doubly true for people who plan to relocate in retirement. Fritz Gilbert in the book, who has a terrific blog called The Retirement Manifesto, talks about his relocation to rural Georgia and how he and his wife spent significant amounts of time prior to retirement, prior to p pulling up roots in an urban area, um, spent time living in that new location, figuring out where they would meet people for friendships, where they would, uh, where they'd They'd go to do their shopping, how the Wi-Fi was, like even really mundane things like that. You need to, to figure it out in advance. So I love the idea of, of dress rehearsaling um, retirement. For many people, retirement will be kind of a phased process. This is uh, something we're seeing more and more of where people, especially if they've been with their employer for um, several years and they're in good standing, they may be able to negotiate kind of a... a you know, a reduced schedule uh, or, um, you know, maybe you're taking, you're keeping some of the activities that you really like about your job and shedding, shedding some of the things you don't like as much. So I like the idea of people being creative versus thinking it has to be a hard stop. Maybe you want a hard stop. Maybe you're fully burned out and it's time to take a break and do something absolutely different. But for some, for some of us, we have aspects of our work that we we enjoy and that do give us a sense of purpose. And um, we should try to carry those forward if we possibly can. Uh, Christine, I'll just get the, you know, 
get the financial aspect of this in because I, I love the other things you're talking about it and you talk about it in the book. Let's talk about withdrawing money because that in itself, you know, you, you built this nest egg and whether you have a pension, whether you have an IRA, whether you have savings, whether you have a 401k, 43B, whatever, you built this nest egg. I find, um, at least in, in kind of watching your coverage and others, this taking the money out withdrawal thing is really hard. And I think that takes a lot of time to figure out, like, how am I going to pay for my medical, housing, et cetera? Absolutely. So so the the technical aspects of safe withdrawal rates, it's a, a huge topic. A couple of key takeaways is that if you can be somewhat flexible with your withdrawals, that redounds to the benefit of your of enlarging your lifetime spending. So the basic idea there is that if you can plug in a little bit to what's going on in your portfolio's value and take less in down market environments, hopefully you won't have many of those, especially early on in retirement. But, it, but if you do encounter them, take less in those periods. And in turn, you should be able to take more when the market is up, as it has been over the past several years. So being willing to be flexible is one of the key superpowers that people yeah. have with respect to retirement spending. The other point I would make on that front is get some help there because you hear these kind of back of the envelope sort of um, rules of thumb, like the 4% guideline. Line, certainly a good starting point when you're five or 10 years from retirement and trying to figure out if you're close. But once you get close to retirement, I think you should put a little bit more specificity around your spending strategy. For many people, delaying Social Security is the greater good for the total plan, and that may necessitate higher spending in the early years of retirement. So you want to explore that possibility and then also explore the implications for how you would construct your portfolio. So if you're spending more to support that delay of social security, that argues for having more safe securities in the portfolio that you could draw upon during that period. So that's sort of the technical slash logistical aspect of this. And then Jeff, you referenced the um, psychological dimension of switching on spending. I, frankly, I think this is something that people really struggle with, uh, especially people who have styled themselves as really good savers throughout their careers, that it's difficult to transition. You, you, I know, you know, for myself, there's a tendency to kind of anchor on your portfolio's high watermark, and you just never want to imagine it going lower than that. It's almost like that's your identity, whatever that high level of your portfolio was, and you never want to see it leave that. So I know in talking to older adults that this is something people really struggle with. There's no easy answer. But if you're working with some kind of a professional, at least, you know, just to get kind of a check on how you're thinking about retirement spending, that might give you a little bit more comfort with um, with finally beginning to withdraw from that portfolio. I think that psychological element is so underestimated and, 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 and you talk about it in the book and you're talking about it here. Uh, my last question for you, Christine, I know we're talking about retirement and typically people retire, you know, 65, although I don't think 65 is really in vogue anymore. I have yeah. my father still works at 78. My mom still works at 77 or 76. Sorry, mom. Um, but I guess my question is, what are the lessons here for we have a lot of younger people that watch the program and, and watch you. What's the lesson for the younger folks, the Gen Z, the millennials, and those that are coming after? What's the takeaway here? Because there's some lessons to be learned from how we're doing it or how our generations are doing it. What's the takeaway? 100% agree with you. Laura Karstensen in the book, she's a researcher at Stanford, made the point that working is good for us, that there's a lot of research that shows working actually ticks a lot of boxes in terms of relationships, purpose, et cetera. But she goes on to point out that the way we work in this country is all wrong, that people show up in retirement, they're burnt out, they're exhausted, they haven't been able to think about anything besides sitting on their couches and watching Netflix. And we also have research that shows that that just that watching TV actually doesn't make us that happy, even though it's maybe the kind of thing that we do at the end of the day with our partner while we're eating dinner or whatever. It, it in retirement, day upon day upon uh, day upon day of doing that does not make people happy. So ideally, if you're still working, you're a younger person, you would find a way to take breaks throughout 
your life cycle. So there may be points in your life when you're raising kids or you're shouldering care for adult elderly parents, whatever, that you would um, find a way to take breaks. And I like that some employers are getting on board with this, with sabbaticals and really helping em employees address the work-life balance thing. So if you can find a way to 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 strike that balance earlier in your career, I think that's that's a much better way to do it than showing up in retirement exhausted when you're 65 or even older. Yeah, actually can shorten your life span, span so that you probably won't need as much money in retirement. But all kidding aside, that's not the direction you want to go. You need a siesta from time to time. Exactly. Christine, we're going to have to leave you there. Great book. Thanks so much for joining us. And look, Thanks. we look forward to having you back on the program again very soon. Thank you so much. It's been great. And don't forget to subscribe to our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse, for all the news in one place. Details at our website. And we're back again tomorrow for another edition of BRN. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, roll with the changes.